Welcome back, welcome back. This is still why in the morning. If you're just joining us, you are on time for uh, Health Tuesday because today we want to talk about uh, positive community perceptions and attitude regarding epilepsy. What is your perception towards epilepsy? Uh, we want to debunk the myths that people have and, you know, just to educate you or create an awareness on what epilepsy really is. And for that, we are joined by Caroline Lydia Nas uh, Nasseria. Yes. Who's the CEO of Seize the Movement. Yes. So you're going to tell us the story about this. T uh, first, tell us a little bit about, about you. Kari Busana. Uh, thank you so much. And thanks so much for inviting me to this session. It's Welcome. a great opportunity whereby mm -hmm. I can be freely able to speak about uh, epilepsy. Yeah. And also even uh, help in removing the stigma. Basically, Carolina Syrian mm -hmm. is just a lady who had her first uh, seizure mm -hmm. when she was around 14 years old. I was, uh, I was around 14 years old, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget we were in a wedding. Then all of a sudden I fell down the stairs. The next thing I remember mm -hmm. is looking, have, having bloody hands and in, a, and in a hospital. And by then my parents were scared. They thought first I had fainted. Then after that I had recurring seizures. As mm -hmm. time went on, my mother became so confused because no one in our family, we don't have a history mm -hmm. of seizures in our family. Yeah. My mom reached to a point whereby she felt uh, she gave up. Even she told God at one time, just take this child away. Oh my. This is too much. So and how they were very much uh, occurrent? Yes, they were current. And you can imagine, my mom did not have any, uh, any, any history or any information about epilepsy. Mm -hmm. So I was having recurrent seizures. I, was, I did not have any medicine. So one day, a lady approached my mom. I've cut this, uh, the story short so that at least you, know, you can get the bits and pieces of everything. Okay. And the lady told her about Kawe. Mm -hmm. Kenya Association, K Kenya Association of the Welfare People Living with Epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And they were offering information about epilepsy. And so my first place to go, my first clinic to go for epilepsy was at Kawe. Mm -hmm. At Kawe, they were able to educate my mother on what Kawe is about and what epilepsy is about. I took, they gave me my first medicine and it helped reduce the seizures to a certain degree. Okay. But not as much. So, funny enough, I'd been called to a national school. So, people were saying maybe this, uh, uh, someone went to a witch doctor. <laughs> so, to prevent you from going. <laughs> to prevent you from going to, to a national school. Wow. And, uh, by the way, so I... Those are some of the myths that are there. I'll never forget exorcisms that happened for me. Oh, dear. I, I'll never forget a pastor coming to me with a Bible. I'll never forget that. Oh, he my. hit my head so hard. Oh. I, pre I, I, I pretended to have a, uh, no, I pretended, oh God, it has oh. come out, it has come out, it has come out. <laughs> so that, oh my goodness, this that hitting me, stop. stop, Oh my stop. goodness. Then the pastor was like, I see the demon has left. And ah. then after that, I had a seizure. Oh. Then I was told, you do not believe. And I said, oh my goodness, maybe I do not believe. Then the mm -hmm. worst thing about it, mm -hmm. despite I going to a, to a national school, I was really stigmatized. People called me demon possessed. Oh gosh! Others even said I've been I've gone to a sorcerer. Oh no! People spoke evil about me. My mother herself was so discouraged. I understand why. And sometimes she wasn't trained even to tell people what was going on with my life. Mm -hmm. But by God's grace, I was able to go through high school with the same same problem. And I really thank God for my father and my mother. Despite them having such a hard time, they were there to support me though it was still very strange for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, by God's grace, I was able to finish Form 4 and I was able to go to university. But at the same time, mm -hmm. I was still struggling with, with, uh, with epilepsy. If there's one thing I want to tell people that, epilepsy is not just the recurrent seizures, it also affects your mental health. Okay, Even it's more than that. It's more than that. It affects your mental health. You go into depression. Because of the stigma that's there. Yes. The people whom you think will understand you. They are the ones that don't even understand. A absolutely. No one understands you. People think there's a demon. People don't want to be next to you. And then that's the time as a girl you want a boyfriend. A girl, you know, a boyfriend yeah. to come in and hold you. Once you tell them you have seizures, or once they, recognize, or once they uh, see, an see one, mm -hmm. 
Mhm. Yule basi the again, Taja nambari iliyopiga hapatikani kwa sasa. And it all run away. And it's something that's beyond you. You can't do anything about it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so when I finished university, I mean when I finished uh, college, uh, high school and I was going to college, I went into depression. And mm -hmm. funny enough, the people who supported me were people who did not know anything about you. About me. Wow. The thing they introduced me to was alcohol. Oh my. I started drinking alcohol. I didn't know alcohol. And medicines with uh, the, the deadly epilepsy. Then they do not go together. Do not go together. But my oh friend, my. I was drinking. Because if I drank alcohol. You'd forget. Exactly. I'll forget the pain. Mm -hmm. And this group was ready to embrace me. But me, Caroline, don't worry. Even if you have epilepsy, we love you. Wow. And the people in Muthu are going to love you are not showing, them, are not showing that love. Mm -hmm. My mother was there. She loved me. My father was there. He loved me. God rest his soul. But my aunts, my relatives, they were not really to embrace me. It was really hard for them. And I don't hold them accountable for that. My church, mm -hmm. they said I was demon possessed. I need to be exercised. And that made me really hate church. Mm -hmm. You made me really hate church. My mother, don't forget, she's a deacon. Oh. My father's a pastor. Wow. And I hate a church to the core. Because all people used to, uh, to think, think about demon demons. Possessed. These demons. So they will see you, they will see some demon inside you. And they will refer to that story in the Bible, where that boy fell ah. down and Jesus, you know, they say, that is that spirit. It should come out in Jesus' name. Oh, no. And I said, oh Lord, what is this? Then, uh -huh. by God's grace, I was able, to, uh, after university, I got uh, a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I went to Arizona State University. Wow. There, I got the biggest culture shock. Again. White people or Americans don't care about epilepsy. They don't care whether you have it or you don't. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, I was scared of telling them what I was going through. Don't forget I'm still taking alcohol. Don't forget I'm still going through depression because no one understands it. Then I go to a community who doesn't know me and they understand about epilepsy. And they understand. Yes. They were ready to embrace me. They wow. were ready to love me. They were not telling me I was demon possessed. They, and they knew this thing is normal. It's normal. Mm -hmm. I was given a car. Wow. I was given the permission to do whatever I wanted to do. They didn't care. They said, oh, a place is just like any other disease. Don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. It's so, okay. So that was new to you. It's something that you've never really received, gotten such a reception. I have never received such a reception. Uh -huh. And so I sat down and said, hey. These Azubus are good people. They understand me. <laughs> so I went through school. I went through university there. I was going for my master's there. I went for my master's because I did my bachelor's here. I went there for my master's. Wow. And while doing my, uh, while doing my master's, life was good. I had seizures here and there, but mm. it was good. Okay. Then time came for me to come back to Kenya. As you know, many of us, you don't like coming back to Kenya. Enough. People don't like coming back to Kenya. <laughs> from America, tell someone, you're coming from America, you're coming back to Kenya. What, oh, what are you Lord. coming to do in Kenya? What are you coming back to do in <laughs> Kenya? You're living the land of wonderful things. Where milk and honey. Milk and honey. Uh -huh. and, and you're coming back to Kenya. Oh, and I'm Lord, oh God, I'm going back to Kenya. Mm. But in my heart, I mm. knew that there's something have to do in Kenya. I do not know what it is, but, but in, my, in my spirit, I feel there is something that I need to do. Mm -hmm. So, while, while still in America, mm -hmm. I started contemplating, should I stay here or not? I know I can stay here if I want to, but yeah. should I stay here or not? Mm -hmm. Then I sat down, I thought, I know like, when I was in America, I had an aha moment. That's the thing I forgot to tell you. Uh -huh, I tell had an aha it. moment. I said, God, if you're real, tell me what, what is going on? What the hell is going on with my life? Mm -hmm. I expected God to come with thunder and thunderstorm and just come and tell me, oh, <laughs> big this voice. is it, you know? This is <laughs> but it was still a small voice. I know what I'm doing. And then I sat down, I looked at my life. I looked at my life. I'll never forget sitting by the lake. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, at the lake there, because there are usually many artificial lakes in, mm -hmm. uh, in Arizona, because it's a dry place. Yeah. And I sat down and I started thinking and I said, oh my goodness. I really did not know what was going on, but I don't blame myself for it. It's mm -hmm. the situation where I was in. So time came, 
I gave my life to Christ when wow. I was there. Wow. And I came back. So you stopped Kenya. hating the church. Now you. I did not tell my mom I was saved. I didn't. <laughs> I kept it my secret. I said I'm not going to tell anyone I'm saved. Because I don't know not a Bible camping ceremony again. Uh, no. I said I'm You've not telling anyone. You've had enough. <laughs> had enough. Uh -huh. I came back to Kenya. Uh -huh. The stigma, oh la la. I was uh -huh. like, dear God, do I take that airplane back and go back to America? Mm -hmm. The stigma was just there. Uh -huh. The first thing I was asked, do you still fall? Not even, do you still have a seizure? Do you do still, still fall? fall? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what's wrong with this person? Do you still fall? And I'm like, oh God, Surely. why did I come back here? Then uh -huh. I had such a struggle getting a job here in Kenya. Because mm. I was told I was overqualified, overqualified, overqualified. Because you'll see my, 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 my certificates, Arizona State University, masters in whatever. And I did not get a job then. Then I started desiring mandazis. Mm -hmm. Yes. From having a master's in Arizona University yes. to selling mandazis. Yes, I started selling mandazis. Then people make fun of me. How can you talk America? That time I'm still having seizures. Oh. So my mom used to tell me, don't get too near to the fire. Just stay, stay away safe. from the fire. Mm -hmm. And I wondered, what is the difference between us here and Americans? The Americans are able to understand. Then, as time went on, I became a part-time lecturer at, uh, at uh, St. Paul's University. And as time went on, I'm where I am at the moment. Where I, am, I do what I really love, mm -hmm. which is communications. But in a liaison, uh, but in a liaison position. Mm -hmm. So when I was there, I started thinking, what do I do with my life? This stigma is so much. Mm -hmm. At that time, you're selling mandazis still. No, no, no I stopped selling mandazis. God had already oh, given had me already? a job okay. as a partner lecturer at uh, St. Paul's University. Mm -hmm. Then, by God's grace, another door opened for me, and I was able not to get a full-time employment where I am right now. Mm -hmm. And one day, this is what happened. Okay. The stigma is still there. One day, you know, I'm trying to hide. No, that's the other thing with epilepsy. We try hiding it. We don't mm -hmm. tell anyone you have epilepsy. Okay. So I have to take my medicine. I'll go to the bathroom. Oh, no. Very fast. That's a secret. No one and should. I to know that I have, I have, that I am epileptic. Mm -hmm. I hid it from everybody. I do not want anybody to know that I had epilepsy. Mm -hmm. So one day, I had a seizure in the office. Where the, you're working now? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it caught people flat footed. They, they didn't know what to do. Yes. They didn't expect that. And I'm telling you, God always sends angels your path. Never forget that. You may be going through a hard time, mm -hmm. but during that hard time, God sends you an angel. Mm -hmm. God sent me a lady. Mm -hmm. I won't mention her name because she's usually loud saying, oh, don't mention my name. <laughs> but I love her so much. She's one of my greatest friends. Mm -hmm. She told me, Caroline, why didn't you tell us what was going on? I told her, I was afraid you're not going to employ me. And I was afraid how you're going to look at me. She told me, no, 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 no. You did not do right. She will have told us. Mm -hmm. We will not discriminate you. Wow. And I said, hey, interesting. Okay. Then she referred me to Professor Amayo. Mm -hmm. I went to Professor Amayo. Uh, Professor Amayo told me those medical jargons. <laughs> then you told me, Caroline, come back. I went to Professor Mayo. So um, who's Professor Mayo? A neurosurgeon? A or? neurologist. Okay. He's the leading neurologist, one of the leading neurologists in Kenya. Okay. okay. Yes, Professor yeah. Mayo is one of the best. Right. And I sat there, he talked, he talked. I'm looking at him, I'm wondering what he's talking about. He's talking, he's talking, he's talking. <laughs> Just he's throwing jargons. Yes. Uh, you have this, you have this. Then I came back. Okay, Dr. Harry, uh, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> you tell no, let's me. Talk. <laughs> no, let's talk. What's going on? Uh -huh. He took my, my, my x-ray. No, this is the funny thing. I expected him to say there's something in your brain that is causing, causing all this. Seizures, uh, he looked at my brain and said, there's nothing. Okay. Your brain is normal. Then okay. I asked him, then what is going on? He told me, your brain is like a fuse. There's like a fuse somewhere. The electric charges, uh -huh. so they become too much. That fuse tends to overload. That's you have that seizure. And I looked at him and I told him, so I don't have any problem with my brain? No, 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 you She's are no more. to go. Uh -huh. Then he told me, what I'm going to do is change mm -hmm. your medication. Okay. He changed my medication mm -hmm. and he started, I started taking Lamictol. Believe me or not, mm -hmm. the seizures reduced from once every three months to once every six months. Oh. 
wow once every six months to once a year wow they reduced drastically look at that and what he told me never miss medication don't forget even i myself i started believing maybe there's a demon maybe i should go and get some more prayers i'm so tired of this then one day uh -huh. i said enough is enough mm -hmm. i need to be the advocate of removing this stigma from about epilepsy in the community from the community itself yeah for the first time mm -hmm. i told people in my family that i am epileptic and i take medicine and this is the name of the medicine and i don't have demons some people wanted to collapse my, some of my family members wanted to collapse <laughs> Because I like we have hidden this for so long. You know, you know, I say it. You need my family. I my family. I said, Akuna, this is the truth. Mm. And the good thing is, my mom supported me. I was so surprised. Wow. My mom supported me. Mm -hmm. My friends supported me, and also my best friend and still my angel. Mm. I'll never. F she's always close to my heart. Mm -hmm. She also supported me. Then you ask me. You are, and then, you ask, then a question comes to your head. Mm -hmm. Then what about family? Did you have a boyfriend? Exactly. Now, now tell us. Because now, yeah, uh, the time up with the road. <laughs> yes, please tell us about it. Because you, you said that being, you know, having uh, epilepsy, it's hard, you yes. know. And it, you know, dating, it's, it's troublesome. So how did you get there? Because I know you're a mom of, is it two or three? Two. two. Mm. Look at that. Yes, uh -huh. two and I have one stepson. So wow. I have three boys. Wow. <laughs> yes. Tell us about <laughs> it. How did you get there? So now, I started dating. Mm. And uh, I want, I, I, I always use that part to say that you really love me or not. Because someone <laughs> told me, if you want to know that a boy loves you, just mm -hmm. tell them what your, your worst thing, the worst thing in your life is so that they're going to jump ship. Okay. So I will, I will go out to the boy, go out to the boy, then I'll tell them, you know, I take mm. medicine, I'm epileptic. Some of them rain like the wind. Lightning, I think, is faster than them. <laughs> they just like, oh, whew. I know that's the thing we're using Motorola, you know a Motorola, yeah. those big ones. Uh -huh. So you're like, but then there was a Mutoja Nambari Lopiga, Patikani Kwa Sasa, but then it was, uh, the phone, the number you are calling is no longer in service. Wow. I was like, okay, I'm done. One dumped. minute you're with them, one minute no longer in service. I am dumped. Then my sister, my, my sister, the one who follows me, she's so beautiful. She's like, uh, mm -hmm. quit. So people will say, ah, Caroline, your sister is better than you know. Oh, no. She's beautiful. But my sister used to tell me, mm -hmm. don't worry, Caroline, the right man will come your way. Yeah. Funny enough, my sister got married ahead of me. Well. And then people tell me, you see, you see, we told when you. will you get married? You, you I told you, we told you, mm -hmm. we told you, this only. Do. Then I was still trusting God. God, you're going to bring the right dude my way. Mm -hmm. Then one day, this man called Patrick comes my way. Mm. This must be the husband. This must be the husband. <laughs> okay. I'm a tattoo driver to make it much better. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I'm a tattoo driver with an Arizona University graduate. Wow. Arizona State University graduate. What a coincidence. Oh my goodness, expected a doctor, a lawyer or something. Then oh, I did for them this matatu driver. Oh, the matatu driver was not from Arizona State. Eh? No, no, no. Oh, you are the one from, okay. No, you're getting that combination. Mm. Arizona State University graduate. Graduate with a matatu driver. Bring married by a matatu driver. What is wrong? Caroline, mm. umekosa na ume. Then uh -huh. I told, no, my, he's, not, he's my husband. I told him then, I have epilepsy. What I need from you, mm -hmm. if you are ready to do it, I just want you to be a spam dog. My dad. Just give me children. And, and go. And go. I, I don't need you. I, I don't need you. I, I don't need heartbreaks. Wow. He looked at me and said, <laughs> 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 he looked at me and said, uh -huh. no, no, I won't do that. I will marry you. Wow. I told him, you are joking. Mm -hmm. Do you know what he did? Yeah. Six months into my into our dating, which I was fifty fifty, my, my foot was there. I was just here waiting in case it jumps ship. I won't you feel are ready. bad. You are not fully there. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just received a call. Do you know Kanyinge is here and they're with his family and they are bringing goods? You're like, what do you mean? Uh, at what? <laughs> you are here, and they did not even inform me. That time I'm in on a trip. You're kidding. And. Yeah. 
my husband and his family have planned something which I do not know. My mom asked me one question. You got married and you did not tell me. Wow. Uh, when did I get married? They're here. They're <laughs> saying you're their wife. And I love, I love this man because mm -hmm. despite him being a matatu driver, he was my anchor. Wow. He stood the test of time. Wow. And the same has gone on. We have walked this journey together. Mm -hmm. God has blessed us with two children. Forget that. And also have a, a stepson. Mm -hmm. And he always reminds me, anyone can be sick. Anyone can die. And I love you just the way you are. Yeah. So I really love Patrick because he stood by me. Wow. And was the first person who was a stigmatized about what was going on. And so when I told him that I had this idea of starting an organization to help mm -hmm. people with epilepsy, he was the first person to come on board and tell me, why not? Take it up. Run with it. Run with it. Wow, we celebrate Patrick today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Patrick, you are highly celebrated by us. Wow. Yes. What is and, um, mm -hmm. and I sometimes feel like crying because I remember when I was, uh, sorry for taking you back, I remember yeah. when I was giving, when I was pregnant with my first son, Joshua. Mm -hmm. People are looking at me very funnily, like they were expecting me to get a seizure and get a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. Do you know I did not get a seizure? Nothing. And I naturally gave birth to a 3.7 kg baby. Look at what God can do. What God can do. Amazing. After that, in 2021, mm -hmm. God gave me another one. Wow. They're all heavy. I think they're just heavy kids. <laughs> 3.6 kgs. And you carried him gracefully. I carried him gracefully. Delivery. I was like this. Uh, you know, I was that, and I was telling God, thank you. It is possible. What am I saying? Mm -hmm. Even this, this organization, because now it's registered as an NGO. You the organization sees the movement. Yeah, sees the moment. Moment. Sees the moment. From that seizure, mm -hmm. sees the, the moment. moment. Therefore, epilepsy should not stop you from doing what you can. Wow. Epilepsy mm -hmm. should not be a reason why mm -hmm. you're not who you are. I'm not yeah. boasting, but I've gone to many, many countries mm -hmm. despite epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And people listen to me not because of epilepsy. They look at me as Caroline. And wow. one thing I'll tell the Kenyan community, epilepsy is Watch your story. There are some maybe who get an accident and their head becomes cracked. Their skull becomes cracked and immediately they start having seizures. Others are born with it. Others, their brain did not develop well when they were young. So they started having seizures. Mm. So sikurogwa. Yeah, and there's a treatment, like you said. Yes. You uh -huh. just take, lami for me, Lamictol. And it's not a lot, just a little bit. Others, they need more. But mm -hmm. the fact is, don't stigmatize. Just love us. Exactly. Don't tell us that we cannot do a certain job because you have epilepsy. No. Mm. I am smart. You're not limited in any way. I'm not limited in any way. Yeah. I love dancing. I'm a mother of children. Mm -hmm. I have a wonderful husband. God bless him. Even if yeah. we fight, that's love. Yes. That's love. I went to that. <laughs> I, have a supporting, I have a supporting colleagues who tell me, who really push me and tell me, Caroline, uh, epilepsy is not the end of the world. Exactly. And I want to tell people outside there. Mm -hmm. If you have an epileptic child or you are epileptic, don't be ashamed. Can I shock you? Mm -hmm. Nobel, the one of the Nobel Prizes, was epileptic. Mm -hmm. Look yes. at that. Your, the famous musician, Lil Wayne, is epileptic. Look at that. You know? The first it doesn't limit you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Washington had epilepsy, one of the presidents of America. Had epilepsy. Winston Churchill. Had a, you see, people you know, who have been so big. Great in the society. And had epilepsy. And they made a lot of progress. When yeah. everyone ran, runs for the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. And they had epilepsy. Right now, people listen to Lil Wayne. And he it doesn't stop epilepsy. him from doing whatever he does. Mm -hmm. Many great people have it. And, they are no, and it doesn't stop them. Why is it that in Kenya... We are stigmatized. So we need to break that stigma. We need to break it. And this is the moment is there. We are here to break it. Yes, we were just registered the other day. Mm -hmm. But I'm bent on telling everybody, I'm raising awareness. Please stop stigmatizing us. Mm -hmm. No, we are also people. We have the ability to do wonders. As long as you give us the opportunity. Mimi mm -hmm. Mimi Mimi Nikaro.
You're just normal. I'm just normal. Ni vile tu ako ka kitu. It's just confused. Confused to ako confused kana. You know, yeah. Kana vanya tuk tuk ala unazema okay sawa. Lakini okay kuma you take medication. You you and have okay. a supporting family. Mm -hmm. You can do wonders. But if you are in a community where you're stigmatized, you have depression mm -hmm. and you end up dying. Not because of epilepsy, but because of the stigma exactly. that brings depression. Exactly. Emma looks at you. Mm. 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 But if you're staying with a family, Mm -hmm. oh, we have a supportive system that helps you. And that's why I encourage people. There are many, uh, if you have someone who has epilepsy, they is mm -hmm. They can provide you with much needed counseling. There are neurologists outside there whom you can see and they can give you the best information. There are people outside there, mm -hmm. neurologists, groups outside there who are ready to support you. If you are a guardian, don't hide your child. If you have epilepsy, don't hide under the carpet. Hey, not be Wake up, do it. Mm -hmm. Because this is the reason why it's there. I now have come to know the reason why I have epilepsy is so that I can be the voice to the voiceless. Mm -hmm. Have courage. God has helped me. I went to a national school. I went to university. Went to and I got a scholarship university. to Arizona State University. Currently, I'm pursuing my second master's. So it should not stop anyone from doing anything. Therefore, I'm calling out even to our government. Mm -hmm. Please, support people with epilepsy. Please. What, what way can the government support? One way is reducing the price. Of the medicine. Yes. Like Nolamictal, mm -hmm. the one I take, it costs 250 shillings per tablet. Per tablet. Mm. And I'm imagining... And if you are taking, imagine, let's say... Four tablets a day. How much is that? Oh my wow. goodness. How many families can afford that? From a poor family? They can't. Okay. The only way they can is to chase away the child to the, uh, to the rural area. Send Ukaina, Mama Kenda Ukaina, Shoshiyako. Stay there. That's not good. So the government can come in by reducing the prices of the medicine. Yes, come and also they should, and also I will ask even the mm -hmm. government, the MPs, to lobby on our behalf. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the schools they should introduce in their curriculum mm -hmm. about epilepsy. Many teachers do not know about epilepsy. True. They do not know how to handle children with epilepsy. So even I'll ask the Ministry of Education to include mm -hmm. epilepsy as one of the dis of one of the disabilities. Exactly. It's not an inability, but one of the disabilities that need to be addressed because currently the rate of epilepsy is rising up. It's increasing. Yeah, and it's it, increasing. Is there a reason for that? Yes. What 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 could be the reason? Depression. So dep one. depression can lead to epilepsy. Very fast. All right. Second, drugs. Okay. Many young people are taking drugs, heroin, cocaine. They're taking it in or even even this uh, kufungua lock. These oh. small small spirits that people take. Mm -hmm. Once you start taking them, and you stop, most of them end up having epileptic seizures. That thing, it's gen uh, uh, you fall down, you have an accident, someone hits you on the head, immediately you have epilepsy. Oh. Another one, you get a disease that affects your brain, your cerebral part of your brain. Most you, of them get, get epilepsy. It. So currently epilepsy is on the rise. So we have to accept it mm -hmm. is there and the government should come in. To help. Yes. Okay. Just reduce Reduce the prices of medicine, mm -hmm. like Lamictol and all of them, and also introduce this into the curriculum mm -hmm. so that everyone can know what epilepsy is all about and also educate the public. Mm -hmm. I'm currently doing my research on the knowledge gap about epilepsy. It is so sad. People even don't have a clue. What epilepsy they is? Don't. Even teachers don't. Mm -hmm. when, when a child has a seizure, the first thing they do, put something. Hello? Come, 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 quickly. The child has fallen down. Mm -hmm. Then you have the, the, the basic first aid uh, information. 
What do you do? When a child has a seizure, what do you do? What do you do? Mm -hmm. So there are so many gaps. Yeah. And since the be. moment is there to help, still in the gaps but i need you i need the media i need people outside there to help us create be, awareness to help us create awareness so that we can be the conduit and guide this and and, and guide people with epilepsy mm. to organizations that can offer help like kawe like uh, uh engage which is led by dr ndege he's a neurologist and even to uh, uh, practicing neurologists like uh, professor mayo so they can be helped but the more we keep quiet the worse it becomes. The worse it becomes. So the moment you just come out and say this is going on, you get healed. Wow, amazing. Mm. And now you mentioned something about teachers not being aware of this and how to treat it uh, or how to you know, react to a child who has epilepsy. Maybe mm. you can educate someone uh, who's watching and has never encountered someone who has seizures what are they not supposed to do because people do the wrong things uh, i understand so what how are you supposed to treat someone who has a seizure first having one seizure doesn't mean you have epilepsy mm -hmm. because sometimes you get, get a seizure because your temperature is very high or something okay. has happened so one seizure doesn't mean you have epilepsy okay when it is recurrent mm -hmm. that's when it's termed as epileptic others call it a seizure disorders others epilepsy depending on the terms they want to use. Okay. So, if someone who has an epilepsy, who has a history of epilepsy, uh, collapses on the floor, or has a seizure, mm -hmm. never ever put something in, in their, mouth. their mouth. You, they are going to get choked and they can die. Mm -hmm. Never just leave them to have that seizure until it ends. What you can do is, you can remove any harmful substance ha object, around them uh, so they will not hit themselves, but let the seizure end. Okay. That's the first thing. Once someone gets out of the seizure, you always feel disoriented. You don't know what is going on, mm -hmm. what happened. So the people around that person should just let the person just rest first, get their bearing. Don't talk to them. Just don't ask them questions. Don't ask questions. Just let them get back their bearings. And if they ask you a question, be honest with them. But tell them, but, but I reassure them, you are okay. Mm -hmm. Then after that, don't give water. Don't, don't give water. Don't give water. Don't. Why? Because you've already come out from a seizure. You have an electric current still going on. What does what an electric current do? It can Ooh. short circuit. Uh -huh. So you, you have to let me rest, sleep for some time to get my bearing back. And if I've hurt myself and you cannot be able to attend to it, you can take me to a doctor. But if you can, you can attend to it. Mm -hmm. But don't run away. Never put anything in the mouth. And never, I usually see people trying to turn somebody never let the seizure end by itself once it ends mm -hmm. now you can take over okay it is scary i won't lie to you mm -hmm. it is a scary sight but you have to be strong enough because this person is weak at the moment and they need you to help them so if you are shocked and i wake up and i realize you're, you're shocked, shocked then i wonder dear lord what what's happened? happening I'm joking this person. What happened? Yeah. But if I wake up and I find someone who's holding my hand and telling me it's okay, it's okay you're it's fine. Okay, you're fine. Just relax. Just relax. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's good. Yes. See mm Kwenda -hmm. I used to wonder what uh, I used to wonder mm -hmm. what if I had it when I, when someone when in the middle of Nairobi, someone a nipore. That's the other thing. Also protect this person from people who want to... You know some people, they take advantage of this situation. Where's the handbag? Yeah. Where's the handbag? Can I get something <laughs> in the handbag? So even not even even you become the watchman. <laughs> so you're everything at that, <laughs> at that moment. Where's the handbag? Can I protect? So you're everywhere. But yeah. at the same time, you're still watching the person. Yeah. But the, most in, the, the, the best thing you can ever do once the person comes of a, of a seizure is just reassuring them. It's okay. it's okay. It's okay. Because if I see you're shocked, I may end up having another seizure. Okay. Yes. So it's, it's okay. It's okay. Just relax. It's Just fine. Just relax. It's fine. It happens. Mm -hmm. You have reassured me that all is well. 
Mm. After some time, I wake up, dust myself, and walk on. Mm. Yes. Wow. Amazing. Lydia, this has been quite the education. You've, your story, plus, you know, we've taken so much from it. And I'm sure, you know, the viewer is now educated on what is epilepsy and, you know, breaking the bias that we have in Kenya, in our community. So what do you want to say to, to everyone, the community that is watching as we come to a close on this? And maybe you can mention your social media handles where people can get you if they want to be part of uh, the organization that you have created to, to, you know, to start this movement yeah, of ending the stigma. This is your camera. Okay. Remember, as a community, you are the first point of contact with someone with epilepsy. So the way you react to them will be the way they will, are going to react to other people and also be able to internalize it uh, uh, inside them. If you create a stigma, if you stigmatize them, most likely the person will end up getting depression, even killing themselves because they have no support. Therefore, as the community, be there to hold our hand. Be there to encourage us that you can do more than people, than, than more, more than even you could think about. We don't have an evil spirit. No. We are just human beings like you and I. Anyone can become sick. None of us chose to have epilepsy. None of us. But with your support, with your help, I'm telling you, people with epilepsy are going to go far. And our government, come alongside us, support us, lobby for us, because you have the you have the resources, you have the channels to make sure that people with epilepsy are taken care of. Even in the constitution, we pray that you're going even to add us into the constitution because epilepsy is considered a disability. And anyone with epilepsy, can you go and get a disability card, which can also even help you even get, even no, uh, get uh, jobs wherever you are, be able to, live and to progress even in life wherever you are, because removing this stigma may take a little bit of time, but every, every journey starts with one step. And if you want to know more about epilepsy and how you can support us because we're here to create awareness, you can write to me through the email seizethemoment.kenya at gmail.com. You can call me by my number 0716560379 or 0789589666. Also, currently we are coming up with a... Um, Currently, we are coming up with a, with a good uh, website. So soon, it will be broadcasted. But you, if you want to talk to me, the, that's my number. And don't forget, kuwa na kifafa, si kurogwa, ni hali ya maisha tu. You can be the best you can. Wow, amazing. Thank you very much, Caroline. Thank you. It's been amazing. And thank you for being a voice. Uh, to the generation and creating uh, the awareness around epilepsy. Mm -hmm. All right, that has been Caroline Lydia Nasarian, who's the CEO of Seize the Moment, creating an awareness around epilepsy. I hope you've taken something from it. If nothing, just remember to treat uh, people with epilepsy with love because they're just like you. There's nothing that they can't do. And if you have epilepsy, embrace it. Talk about it because... You are just perfect the way you are. This has been uh, Health Tuesday. We are going to take a short break and then Brand Sakwa as well as Kalami Val are going to come on board to continue with some great conversations around entrepreneurship. The hashtag to use is Why in the Morning at Y254 channel. See you on the other side.